Dimension of physical quantity We know that derived units are such units that depend on base units. For example, if we take the CGS unit of density, which is gram per centimeter cube, then it is very easy to understand how the unit of density depends on the unit of length centimeter and the unit of mass gram. On the other hand, if we take the CGS unit of force, dyne, which is a derived unit, the relationship of the dyne to the base units of length, mass, and time is not directly understood. For this, it is necessary to know how force as a physical quantity relates to length, mass, and time. This relation is known as the dimension of the physical quantity. From Newton's second law of motion, we know force is equal to mass into acceleration. Therefore, the unit of force is equal to the unit of mass into the unit of acceleration. That is, dyne is equal to gram into centimeter, per second square. Here the relation of dyne to centimeter, gram and second is clearly understood. Now if we take the dimension of length as L, dimension of mass M, and dimension of time as T, then from the above relation we get, the dimension of force is equal to, M into, LT minus 2, or MLT minus 2. This is the dimension of force, which clearly shows how force as a physical quantity depends on the base quantity. So the nature of a physical quantity is also described by its dimensions. In general, the dimension of a physical quantity is the expression that expresses how any physical quantity depends on base quantities. Once this dimension is known, the relationship of the base units to any derived unit can easily be determined. All the physical quantities can be expressed in terms of some combination of seven fundamental or base quantities. We shall call these base quantities as the seven dimensions of the physical world. These base quantities are mass, length, time, temperature, electric current, luminous intensity, and amount of substance. Where mass has the dimension of capital M, length as capital L, time as capital T, temperature as theta, electric current as capital I, luminous intensity as capital J, and amount of substance as capital N. We have already known the dimensions of seven base quantities. Now let's find the dimensions of other derived quantities. Dimension of area. We know area is equal to the length square. So the dimension of the area is L square. Dimension of volume. We know volume is equal to the length cube. So the dimension of the volume is L cube. Dimension of density. We know density is equal to mass divided by volume. So the dimension of the density is m by L cube, or ml to the power minus 3. Dimension of velocity. We know velocity is equal to displacement by time. So the dimension of the velocity is L by t, or Lt inverse. Dimension of acceleration. We know acceleration is equal to change in velocity divided by time. So the dimension of the acceleration is LT inverse by T, or LT to the power minus 2. Dimension of force. We know force is equal to mass into acceleration. So the dimension of the force is MLT minus 2. Dimension of work. We know work is equal to force into displacement. So the dimension of the work is ML2, T minus 2. There are many such derived quantities, but we have listed a few of them, with their relation to base quantities and dimensions. Dimensionless physical quantity. Some physical quantities are expressed as the ratio of two equivalent physical quantities. For example, plane angle is equal to arc divided by radius. Here, both arc and radius refer to length. So both dimensions are L. That is the dimension of plane angle is L divided by L, or 1. A quantity is called a dimensionless quantity if its dimension is 1. So plane angle is a dimensionless quantity. Like plane angles, solid angles, specific gravity, etc., are also dimensionless quantities. Dimension analysis Dimension analysis is a method of finding the dependency of derived quantity on base quantities. 
Obviously, this is a theoretical analysis. Three main tasks can be done, with the help of this analysis. Number one, to change the unit of a physical quantity, from one system to another. Number two, to check the consistency of a dimensional equation. And number three, to determine the correlation of various physical quantities. The principle upon which these tasks depend, is known as the principle of dimensional homogeneity. This principle states that, an equation is dimensionally correct, if the different terms on both sides of the equation, have the same dimension. So by analyzing the dimensions of both sides of an equation, we can easily understand, whether the equation is dimensionally correct or not. Now let us see, whether the following equation taken from four basic kinematics equations, is dimensionally correct or not. Here x, stand for displacement, so its dimension is, l. Small u, stands for initial velocity, so its dimension is lt inverse. Small t stands for time, so its dimension is capital T. And small a, stands for acceleration, so its dimension is lt minus 2. So the dimension of the left side of the equation is L. And the dimension of the first portion of the right side of the equation is, LT inverse into T, or, L. And also the dimension of the second portion, of the right side of the equation is, 1 into, LT minus 2 into T2, or, L. So the dimension of the right side of the equation is L. As you can see, both sides of this equation have the same dimension, so the equation is dimensionally correct. Similarly, by following this method we can easily identify whether any equation is dimensionally correct or not. If you enjoy our videos, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.